17 lifestyle ways to lower your blood sugar fast. Now, some of these are gonna seem obvious, and you might know them, but for every one that's obvious, there's probably two that you're gonna learn. So even if there's something that you've heard before, we're gonna move relatively fast, so just be patient and you'll learn something. So get your notepad ready, let's rock and roll. So the first one, obviously get sleep, but people don't realize what an impact it has. There was a study that was published in the journal PLOS One that demonstrated that the difference between six and seven hours of sleep is huge. As a matter of fact, people that get on average six hours of sleep have about a 30% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So this isn't just important for people that are already diabetic or have high blood sugar. This is for people that are just living their life and you think you're invincible until all of a sudden you're not. Okay, the next one, number two, is simply walks after meals. This is one of the most basic things that we should have drilled into our heads, and it's one of the most powerful things when it comes down to modulating glucose. We could talk about all kinds of nitty gritty macronutrient breakdowns and different polyphenols and this and that until we're blue in the face, but one thing that's going to lower your glucose the most, and I see it all the time when I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor, is going for a five or a 10 minute walk every time after you eat. Number three is actually a different kind of one, but it's similar to the last one, and that's having your carbohydrates during a workout instead of before or instead of after. Now, this doesn't have to be the rule, don't get me wrong, but there was something that is called insulin-independent glucose uptake, and it's something that I didn't learn until later in life. Now, when I was overweight before and I was diagnosed with diabetes, it was, I don't know, I didn't know anything about this. But now I learned that if you eat carbohydrates or just even consume some fruit or something during your workout, because you're already moving, your body can suck up that glucose without ever having to use insulin, which means that you get to regain some insulin sensitivity. You get to use those carbs without having to ask your body to produce insulin. Long term, this really helps you out because it gives you a little bit of a break from constantly having to pump out insulin. So do you have to do it? No, but it's a nice little hack. Number four is don't eat when you're stressed. Like, that seems like general weight loss knowledge, right? But it's actually very important for glucose. When we're stressed, our body is not in food eating mode. Unfortunately, the lines kind of get blurred and the electrical signals get messed up. We tend to snack when we get anxious. We get to tend to snack when we're like nervous or stressed out. Get in a fight with your girlfriend, you, you go and you eat. And what do you eat? You typically eat hyperpalatable sweet stuff when you are not exactly in the spot to metabolize it. So there's a lot of research to back up that when you're stressed, your glucose management is not as good. And that happens. Again, I notice it when I'm monitoring my glucose or wearing a CGM. Now this next one is a nutrition related one and I have to get kind of biochemical for just a second, but that's just the way that I am. And that is increasing the variety, not just the amount, but the variety of fruits or the variety of vegetables that you get in. And it's not about the fiber in this case. We're talking specifically about the polyphenols. We're talking about the antioxidant ability and the polyphenols in fruit and some veggies that literally have an impact on glucose by themselves, independent of fiber. So there was a study published in the journal Nutrients that demonstrated that the polyphenols, specifically in this case in apples, can have an impact in inhibiting amylase and alpha-glucosidase. These are enzymes that break down carbs. So when you are consuming these polyphenols, you might digest carbs slower and not spike as much. But then there's also evidence that things like anthocyanins and dark colored berries, well, this can increase glucagon production, which ends up making it so that when you do spike, you come back down a little bit easier. My point in saying this is that we can pull studies all day long. The bottom line is that polyphenols, phenolic compounds, antioxidants, flavonoids, these all seem to have a huge impact directly and indirectly on our blood sugar. So eat a variety of them, lots of different colors. Next one is one that you've probably heard before and that's eating your protein and or veggies first. There was one of my favorite studies that was published in Diabetes Care. I call it the ciabatta study because they gave these people uh, ciabatta bread, orange juice, and then had them eat chicken, okay, and oil, right? Then the other group did the opposite. They eat the chicken first, and then they have the ciabatta and the orange juice. Well, they measured their glucose at 30, 60, and 120 minutes, and get this. The group that had the protein first had 28% lower glucose at 30 minutes, 36% lower glucose at 60 minutes, and 16% lower glucose at 120 minutes. Nothing changed, not the amount. They just ate the protein and the veggies first, 
before having the ciabatta and orange juice. The next one seems kind of obvious, but it's something that a lot of us don't do because it seems like it takes some time. Monitor and learn. Simply because you do have a level of bioindividuality with your gut microbiome, and one of the only ways you will learn is by monitoring and looking at how you respond to not just foods, but how you respond to foods when you're sleep deprived or how you respond to foods when you're stressed, or how you respond to foods after you go for a run compared to after you do a set of squats. I recommend checking out Cygnos if you wanna try out a continuous glucose monitor so you can monitor your glucose in real time. It does make quite a difference to be able to like look at your phone, see like immediately how something is impacting you without having to prick your finger all the time. So you get access to a Dexcom meters. That way you can wear a CGM. You don't have to go to the doctor. You can do it all right there. It makes it super easy. But then Cygnos uses a really cool app that also kind of algorithmically tells you where you need to be and teaches your range. And it notices like, let's say you go out and you eat a big bowl of pasta. It'll send you a notification and says, hey, like high blood sugar alert, like you're starting to spike really fast. You should go do X amount of exercise or X amount of walk or whatever to try to bring your glucose down. And if your glucose dips low, you get to learn a whole lot. Plus it's got community aspects, so you can do challenges, all kinds of stuff. I'm on there because I'm always wearing my CGM. Anyhow, that link is down below, saves you 15% off utilizing Cygnos as well. So 15% off getting your CGM and getting access to Cygnos using that link down below, top line of the description under this video. Now we've got a fun one, breath work. This is really, really interesting. I've had people tell me that doing breathing exercises and doing big diaphragmatic breaths, not even like regimented stuff, can have an impact on your metabolism, but I didn't believe it until I tried it. And I started using some different like apps here and there. I'll, I'll use State, I'll use another one called Othership, uh, all kinds of different apps out there to help you with breath work. But check this out. There was a study published in Complementary Therapies and Clinical Practice that found that doing diaphragmatic, just full belly breathing after eating had a short-term and a pretty long-term impact on postprandial glucose, had an impact on fasting glucose, had an impact on HbA1c, even had an impact on weight, even had an impact on glutathione, like the liver's ability to actually deal with uh, metabolizing and actually getting rid of things that shouldn't be there. Bottom line is this stuff works and the effect on glucose in the short term after like a high carbohydrate meal is pretty pronounced. So we're talking things like box breathing, breathing in for four count, holding for four count, exhaling for four count and holding on the exhale for four count. Just doing that like 10 or 15 times has a huge impact and it's a good lifestyle tactic to start deploying all the time. Next one is skip the fast food, even if it's low carb. The research is starting to get really strong that trans fats are a huge driver of insulin resistance because they directly lead to hepatic liver fat and visceral fat, which seems to be an even stronger driver of insulin resistance than even sugar consumption, which sounds hard to believe, but it makes sense considering how much we start consuming over the last like 30, 40, 50 years. In the same vein of talking about fats, keep your saturated fat intake down to 20% of your total fat intake. Let's say hypothetically you consume 100 grams of fat, you should limit it to about 20 grams of saturated fat. This becomes more important if you are eating a good amount of carbohydrates and it becomes even more important if you eat a lot of food, if you're in a caloric surplus. Because what we do see is that excess saturated fat does lead to a fatty liver, just like excess carbs do, but in different ways. And that fatty liver could be a bigger driver, again, that visceral fat and fatty liver, a bigger driver of insulin resistance and hyperglycemia than even just eating too many carbohydrates in one sitting. They both can be bad, but we also can't completely ignore the data behind too much, operative words, too much saturated fat. Try a sauna. Now, before you skip this section, you can use a cheap infrared sauna. You can use an expensive, elaborate dry sauna. You can use a barrel sauna, or you can take a really hot bath and get the same effect. This has a huge impact on blood glucose because it is an exercise mimetic. It mimics the effects of exercise. It's vasodilating. 
it increases blood flow, it increases cerebral blood flow, it increases growth hormone levels, it increases glymphatic clearance so you sleep better, so directly and indirectly, you have huge impacts on your blood sugar. This one's funny, but drink water. Specifically drink 500 milliliters of water if you want to at one sitting, because there's a study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism that was really cool, found 500 milliliters of water can increase your resting energy expenditure by up to 25% inside of that 60 minute period. This increase in metabolic rate also indirectly suggests that you're gonna have better glucose disposal as well. But again, you're also probably just gonna eat a little bit less when you're drinking enough water. But people forget, it really does drive up your metabolism a bit. Go rucking. The heck does that mean? Well, you're gonna go for walks, right? By simply putting on like a 20 pound weight vest or a 10 pound weight vest or a backpack that has some weight in it, the amount of demand you place on the larger muscles, like your glutes, like your quads, that demand sucks up glucose like mad. It is such a difference going for a hike with just your body weight compared to adding extra weight. It is a very simple way to really get that resistance training effect without actually like resistance training and going to the gym. Huge impact because you're carrying that weight that's engaging those muscles and contracting those muscles in a different way, similar to like you doing lunges. Which leads me to my next one. If your resistance training and glucose control is your goal, try doing full body resistance training for a couple of reasons. One, you're going to utilize the glycogen in the area of the muscle that you are using, right? You cannot take glycogen from your bicep to fuel your quadricep. It has to burn it there. So if you use your full body, you can glycogen deplete and then you have the better ability for the carbs that you eat to go into the areas that you depleted. So if I go and I just train my biceps really hard forever, glycogen resynthesis, like when I consume carbs, it's only gonna replenish the biceps. But if I go and I train my whole body, I can at least regain and restore to the whole body. So it's just a good habit to get in. But additionally, it makes it so that you're not sore all the time so you could possibly go in a little bit more frequently. Next up is simply fasting one day per week. You don't have to do it, don't get me wrong, it's not required, but as someone that intermittent fasts a lot, I'll tell you that doing a fast one day a week, whether it's a 16, 18, or just a whole day, the data is strong. Yeah, it works like caloric restriction because it is a form of caloric restriction, but maybe that's just easier for you. Maybe you'll feel good and you just say, you know what, one day a week, I'm gonna fast. The data is strong that it does have huge effects on the metabolism and glycemic control, why not? Simple one is get up for two minutes every 30 minutes. So you're sitting down, well, that's fine, but get up for two minutes every 30 minutes. Studies are really, really clear with this, that if you just get up and break up the sedentary lifestyle a little bit, the impact on your overall health, cardiovascular disease risk, and of course, your diabetes risk is quite high. And lastly, get outside. And it's not just because it makes you feel good, the vitamin D has a huge influence on our glucose metabolism. And now we're starting to understand that there might even be some links with photobiomodulation, like actually the impact of the sun. Just like sun grows plants, photosynthesis, there's an impact on the mitochondria. The sun has an impact on our mitochondria too that might make it healthier and metabolize glucose better. But most importantly, right now we have the data on the vitamin D. So don't be skimping on that. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.